Hello and welcome back to the Road to KSP. We're starting off today with a Moho Relay mission. Because in the last episode, we launched a mission out to Jewel. And we need a way to communicate with them. They're not too far away yet. But, uh, if you didn't know, um, technically the innermost planet is also the closest planet for most of the year to every planet in the entire solar system. If you didn't know that, now you know it now. Anyway, we're sending out a mission out to there, and look, it's already pretty much in orbit, which gives me the perfect time to kind of cut in and basically just say, if you like this video, can you please, you know, drop a like, comment, subscribe, or anything. We're trying to get to 500 subscribers, and if we get up to 500 subscribers, I'll do an hour-long video. Literally only 10 subs- no, 20 subscribers away. Ah, anyway. Now we're back to, you know, me messing around, trying to get a perfect orbit uh, to Moho. It is always a pain, because it's always at a weird angle. It's, it's like a painful planet to get to. It's such a hefty Delta V just waste. Uh, I don't really particularly like getting to Moho. Uh, I, it's, it's always a pain for me. Anyway, we have to, we're have we launching this super hefty rocket there because it just drains our delta V. So, uh, on this stage, we have this just massive, massive stage. Literally, like, f uh, like pretty much almost the size of a... Uh, what's it called? Anyway, we, we got there. Uh, and we're going over to the Charmer, the Crate, and the Cobra. And it's attached to the Tai Chi Station. We're, gonna, we're going to disconnect it from Tai Chi Station. Um, as we are about to. Uh, actually, we already did. We're just slowly making our way. Oh, no. We just... Now we did. I don't know why we took so long there. Now we're getting as far away from the station as we possibly can. Getting all the way all the way to around 75 uh, on our uh, periapsis. 75. But I accidentally left a couple of the engines on, so we started to tumble. Which isn't, you know, the best thing. But I just rotated the orbit around just a little bit, and that's that's fine. We'll be able to make it there. I had to turn off those two engines, and then we'll pretty much just make it there. Uh, yep, so our nuclear engine will be uh, slowing us down around the, around the planet at the apoapse, and then it will be cutting us down at the periapse to about... Uh, to about a circular orbit, uh, just just above Kerbin, uh, in very low Kerbin orbit, which allows us to, you know, get the crate and the charmer, or not crate and charmer, crate and cobra up there. Uh, uh, yeah, just because they don't have the Delta V Martians to get all the way to the station, like we have covered in previous episodes. Anyway, we started off with Valentina's ship, the uh, crate, which is the newer one. Uh, there were some pretty hefty stability problems, uh, which, like, we have covered it in previous episodes. That's how the um, original, uh, the Taipan, I think it was called, got destroyed. Uh, the Taipan got destroyed by the, uh, by the fact that it's really hard to pitch these up. So I started moving the fuel around. Uh, and that kind of helped the stability just a little bit, but it didn't really help it. Um, what was our main saving grace is the fact that we uh, put uh, a whole bunch of fuel in the back end before we left uh, this, the Charmer probe. Uh, anyway, that we barely survived the landing here, um, which is pretty good. Yeah. Now we're uh, back at Charmer, and there's the crate. We're uh, we're detaching the crate from the station. Or maybe it's Cobra. No, I think it might be the crate. Um, anyway, we're detaching it from the station, and we're about to put ourselves in. This time around, we didn't put extra or, uh, fuel in the back, because I thought maybe that was one of the reasons why we were having trouble tilting upward. Uh, not the case. Uh, we'll actually run into the same tilt problem here in just a second. So, um, we actually reached 
a pretty bad problem where I actually couldn't tilt the craft upward at all. Like, it just was not taking the tilt. Like, I kept trying to tilt it up, it wouldn't go up, it just kept flinging itself back forward. And then I checked the map a couple of times as it was, you know, starting to get in really close. Uh, I wasn't paying attention a whole lot to the thing, and boom, they're dead. Jeb and Bill are dead. And that is why we're on this mission right now with Valentina and uh, Leonid and Rafed Kerman. Uh, they are returning a memorial plaque to the surface of the Mun, uh, celebrating the life of Jeb and Bill Kerman. It was a sad loss, and Valentina herself was almost nearly wiped out by this incident. Uh, with the uh, X3 and uh, as of that we are going to be retiring the X3 as a SSTO and we'll be uh, updating with the X4 and the X5 which will be coming in uh, sooner episodes. The X3 have seen a lot of problems um, as of right now two of the three X3s have failed spectacularly and it has just been pretty rough on our crew. Anyway, we are uh, jumping out with Valentina, and Valentina is going off on her own to place the flag up at the top of this hill so that it can forever see Kerbin in a beautiful light. Yep. So now the flag has been placed, and it's basically just a plaque that talks about, uh, like, rest in peace, Jeb and Bill. And now, please join us in a moment of silence for Jeb and Bill. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of feel guilty for using taps right then, um, for two fake tiny green men. Um, but yeah, I mean, they are like the most important men for our space program. Like, the two little tiny green men. I mean, everyone knows about Jeb and Bill and Bob and Valentina Kerman. They're, they're just the most recognizable names when it comes to KSP. And, uh, we have lost half of them in that recent mission. And we almost lost three of them with, uh, with, I think it's Bob being the only one who's left on the station, uh, at Taichi Station, which is kind of horrific. And so, uh, for right now, we will not be launching SSTOs to grab crew. Uh, they're just, it's, it's the backlash. It's the backlash period of, like, any, uh, any program. Uh, our shuttles failed, so we're going back to the tried and true method for a little bit. Maybe we'll bring shuttles back out, but yeah, here we are just returning our crew back to the surface of, uh, the surface of Kerbin after that, uh, well, say honorable mission. Uh, yeah, anyway, we're launching the first HAB module for Tai Chi 1 now on a, uh, on a CDSM-5 uh, rocket. It's uh, our reusable rocket. If you have watched in the past, you'll know that it kind of works like a Falcon 9, except the upper stage is also reusable. Uh, yeah, so there's our stage separation, and they are off. And as you see, the screen pulls away, and here's our first stage going in for the landing in the ocean. I wish I had a platform out there, but I know it'd just be harder to always reach it. I would have to move it around, and I don't really want to do that. Anyway, here's the second stage. The second stage is about to deorbit itself, and this is the first time where I've really tried to actually get it to land on the pad. I mean, I've tried to get it to do it before. This is like the first time it's actually been even close to successful, which is a good... Uh, like a good telling sign for the future. So it 
it comes in at a pretty steep angle and then also in the left hand corner you can see our uh payload it's making its way to tai chi station up there in the left hand corner anyway it's uh the, the what is this the second stage the second stage is currently approaching the uh yeah uh, what's it called the the ksc it's approaching the ksc it's coming in really like really good towards the pad it uh pops out his parachutes it used some of its remaining fuel and then i was trying to tilt it here so that it kind of slowly kind of moved over towards the the landing pad a little bit better but i mean it's literally just right on and we got 100 percent back on that that was fully reused it's awesome anyway here's the uh payload it's uh slowly maneuvering its way to the station and there is its, uh, I believe, its second burn. So now it's like, yeah, it's only three kilometers away and it'll be closing in to Tai Chi Station pretty quickly here. Yep, there it is. There's Tai Chi Station. We're just going to attach it to that back port right there. And uh, so I forgot I didn't have SAS on, so I was just kind of wiggling around and I didn't understand why it wasn't working. Then I figured out, you know, SAS isn't on. But I figured it out way too late, and there we are. But we were already careening all over the place, just... Yeah, it was it was a big mistake on my part. And also, these, uh, these thrusters are a little bit too uh, hefty for the craft that I was using. Uh, anyway, the, the bottom stage, or the third stage, I didn't necessarily make reusable, but I wanted to see if I could reuse it. And so I deorbited it, and then we had more than enough fuel to actually be able to land it. And itself has a high enough thrust to weight ratio to land itself. So uh, we just burned, and then it ran out of fuel about, you know, four meters up, but I mean, at the most it just deep uh, dented the bottom. And yeah, so we're start we're ending off the episode with the Deep Space Network, which will be three geostationary satellites or geostationary satellites for Kerbin, and they will be designed to uh, transmit data deep into sm into space from uh, Kerbin, and this will be able to contact Moho, and it will be able to contact our mission. Uh, just from any time of day, any point, any direction, it will be able to contact Moho uh, and the station. These satellites right here can actually contact the station. Just in case Jewel is on the opposite side of the uh, sun from us, it will still be able to contact Moho, which will be able to contact Jewel, which is an amazing, amazing feat of technology. Uh, the fact that we have something that is currently on its way to Moho, almost there, because it's it's actually a pretty quick trip to Moho. Uh, yeah, so I just made it so that this uh, this craft it uh, just orbited the planet and then just every once in a while would uh, pop out a satellite, and that would uh, the satellite would uh, circularize its orbit and then I would switch back to the main craft, and yeah. That's going to, uh, yeah, this is the last one right here before I decided to deorbit the whole thing. Uh, yeah. And, um, since, since we're almost to 500 and I thought it would be a long, uh, like a long time till I got to 500, like I said, I think before Christmas, uh, if we got to 500, I would, uh, release an hour long video, but hey, if I make it to 1000 before Chris, uh, before Christmas, if I make a, make it to 1,000, I will post a week of videos starting January 1st. I think that that would be a pretty cool uh, thing. Anyway, I tried to reuse this one too. Um, didn't work out so well. I mean, it looks like it worked out fine, but when it turned over, you don't really see it here. I stopped the recording. Sorry. Uh, yeah, it, it died. 